Hello and welcome to Online Studio. My name is Jessica Arsenault and I'll be your host for this event. I work in the Learning and Community Engagement Team at the National Gallery of Canada. As we begin this event, I want to acknowledge that the National Gallery is located on the unceded and unsurrendered territories of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people, who have been the guardians of this territory since time immemorial, in the present, and for the future. The last few weeks, I've been taking this class called Move to Action. It's organized by the Canadian Museum Association, and we learn in there from the report called Move to Action and its recommendation for museum policies in relationship with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous, Indigenous People. I'm really grateful for this learning, so I wanted to share that if you work in a museum and have not read the Move to Action report, I encourage you to read it and I'll put it in the chat uh, for you afterwards. We're joining from many different territories and contexts tonight, but we can each support Indigenous self-determination in the context where we live and work. So tonight's event um, will take place like this. First, a short little introduction to the event with me. Then artist Céline de Grand Prix will present the setup and the tools you'll need for tonight's workshop. While you prepare your space, my colleague Alexia will share an artwork from the Nick Sequoir Humor and Horror Exhibition. And finally, we'll spend the rest of the session making with Salem. A few notes before I pass it to the artist. This workshop will take place in English. If you'd prefer to attend a workshop in French, you can find the list of French online studio sessions and watch past sessions on our website, gallery.ca. Cet atelier aura lieu en anglais. Si vous souhaitez participer à une session en français, vous pouvez trouver la liste des ateliers à venir ainsi que les enregistrements des ateliers passés sur notre site web beauxarts.ca. This talk is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel in the coming weeks. Throughout the, ev the event, you're invited to communicate your questions and comments with us by using the Q&A box that you can find at the bottom of your screen. We'll do our best to get to your questions. Live closed captioning is available in English. You can access it by clicking on the CC icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I would now like to present artist Selim de Grand Prix. Selim de Grand Prix is an urban Inuk artist based in Ottawa and a graduate of Algonquin College. She artfully draws upon her Inuit culture and myths to shape her creative path. Focused on themes of femininity and women, womanhood, her creations embody the authentic essence of her heritage, showcasing a profound connection to her traditions. Welcome, Selim. Hello. Thank you so much for the introduction. That was amazing. I am so excited to be here tonight. Uh, very excited to be creating amazing artwork with you guys and Going into a little bit of what we will be doing tonight. Tonight, we are going to be creating some bow ties. And this one is a sealskin bow tie with the caribou antler right here. Uh, a little about myself. Uh, I am Salem de Grand Prix. I am an urban Inuk artist born and raised here in Ottawa. Uh, for the materials here tonight, we will... Let me just change camera. So what I have here is a couple templates, the ones that we had up on the website cut out, uh, a pre-done back, as well as ulu, pliers for the sewing, sinew, as well as leather and seal skin as well as some fur for uh, personalization, but that will be going on a bit later. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, Selim. So we'll be back with the artist in just one minute, but we'll give you some time to set up um, your space at home. So uh, during the time that you set up your space, uh, we'll just be looking at an artwork from the Nick Sequark exhibition with Alexia. So welcome, Alexia. Hello, thank you for the welcome back again with another artwork. So this sculpture that you see here, 
from the year 2000, unofficially titled Dancing Bear Spirit with Moon, features a perched zoomorphic being made of caribou antler, animal hair, stone, and muskox horn. It is quite easy to miss the moon that is represented, but if you pay attention to the lower left corner of the sculpture, you'll see a fine curved sliver, a delicate crescent moon. It's an otherworldly, strange creature that we have here. And according to Nick Sikwark, the stranger or the scarier the carving, the better. In Sikwark's artistic practice, the spiritual element is one of the key themes. In addition to scenes showing the Inuit way of life, Sikwark also had an exceptional talent for depicting people, animals, and shamans. He was interested in human states of mind, questions, emotions, and expressions. Transformational imagery, excuse me, depicting a changing existence or appearance is a dominant concept in Sikwark's visual vocabulary. Now, a little bit on the artist. He was born in Gary Lake on May 21st, 1943, and he was the youngest in his family with five siblings. Living and traveling in seasonal camps during his early years gave him a foundation of knowledge and skills in hunting, observation of the land, and oral tradition, as well as confidence in his own ability to create with his hands. Within his community, he was known as both a hunter and an artist. Sikwark was orphaned at a very young age, then lived with relatives, then lived with the Oblate Fathers. As a young man, he studied for the clergy in Winnipeg and Ottawa before settling in Kugaruk, Nunavut. It was in 1976, after a trip to Montreal for the Olympic Games, that he began working as a full-time artist, creating sculptures that appealed to his imagination or that reflected his dreams. Around 2002, Sikwark became concerned about lung damage caused by the dust produced by his sculptures. This concern pushed him to pivot towards drawing and painting. And if you notice, this sculpture here was done in 2000, so it is among maybe the last ones. Although Sikwark became famous for his sculptures, he was known to a generation of school children in the mid 1970s through his five books of drawings and stories. In total, Sikwark produced 86 drawings and accompanying texts. To quote him, he said that drawing is easier than carving because when you make a mistake, you can erase and fix it, but with carving you can't, you have to start over. This evening, we are not doing drawing or carving, but leather crafting and sewing. Like Sikwark, we will bring a fresh interpretation and shape to a natural material, giving it a new purpose and life. Throughout his long artistic career, Sikwark has been a storyteller creating highly imaginative experimental works of art. Known in his community as a hunter, as much as an artist, he brings to his creations an intimacy derived from his knowledge of the land and its materials. Regardless of the medium chosen, his artworks contain an unexpected duality centered around themes such as the environment, relationships between humans and non-humans, transformation, and dreamlike states of mind. If you'd like to learn more about Nick Sikwark, there is a wonderful article written by our Associate Curator of Canadian Art, Christine Lalonde. You can find it in the magazine section of the National Gallery of Canada website, and we will put the link in the chat section of the webinar. So that's it for me. I hope you guys have fun tonight. Thank Before. you very yes. much. Thank you, Alexia. So we'll now invite Silim back on and uh, we can start making. If you have any questions during the event, just put them in the Q&A and I'll bring them up for the artist. Welcome, Selim. Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Alexia. That was amazing. Um, I would also like to talk a little bit about the dancing bear and the moon. The reason I chose that as the artwork to be connected to this workshop is that I go by Tukuk online, which is in a nuktitu moon which was actually one of the first or the first in a do word I've ever said and I've always felt very connected to it and right as I saw that sculpture I knew it had to be a part of it and I could how uh, Nick talks about humor and horror I thought it'd be so cute just having a little bow tie on that little uh carving <laughs> but uh we will get started. I will turn on 
the other screen. So I have a couple sealskin parts ready. But to get started, we will start tracing out our pattern in our leather. I don't have a specific thickness of leather. leather. So for the pattern, I find this one works the best with leather so that you'll be able to place it on top like this in the end. And it looks very beautiful. I brought this one here today, which is the one in the photo as well. And I'm excited to get started. When I first started doing artwork like this, I did not have a specific template. I actually ended up using a tissue box and cutting out a template to start doing my bow ties on, which I brought here today saying that art could start anywhere. You don't have to be a professional to do sewing like this. I started with this pattern and now I have grown to a double pattern. This is a uh, beginner friendly sewing as well. I find it is quite nice to do and it's such a great gift. I love seeing like traditional wear in like bow ties or elegant settings. And it's just, I love that. For the leather, you don't have to worry too much about how you cut it, um, which I will go over a bit after with the seal skin. The seal skin has to be cut in a specific way uh, so that the fur does not get cut. So I have heard a lot of people saying that they don't like to cut seal skin with scissors because when you do, it does cut the fur as well and leaves it with a very blunt end, which isn't exactly the most beautiful design. So if you guys can see, I cut this one with uh, Ulu and you could see the, maybe not the fur coming at the bottom, but I did a test earlier and cut one with scissors and you could see how blunt the edge is. But it really is based off preference. So one way that I was taught how to cut seal skin was to uh, trace your pattern, of course, on one side, and then I will be cutting it with my Ulu here tonight, uh, my cute small one that I had in the photo as well. You could also use a razor blade, uh, Ulfa, uh, what are other things? Um, any blade really works well with seal skin. I find that I prefer using a razor blade or a uh, ulu. And going into a bit about the seal skin, I uh, tonight have ring seal here, which has this beautiful pattern. And, oh, I love this. With the seal skin, I find it's quite thick to cut through, so you may need, mm, sorry, I meant to say sew through. <laughs> but yes, this is how I personally cut seal skin. And enjoy the ASMR, I, if you guys can hear it. It is awesome hearing the noise of seal skin being cut.
So I have a couple of questions. Where are the participants from today? I would love to know how far this workshop is reaching. If you want to respond to Selim's question, you can just put it in the q and I'm starting to see some answers. So someone is saying Halifax, Nova Scotia, Montreal. Whoa, that's so cool. Um, Fort Smith, North, Northwest Territories. Belleville, Ontario, Winnipeg, Kadowit, hey. <laughs> nice. Toronto. I am so happy about the reach. Thank you guys all for coming. I am so excited to show how I sew these beautiful bow ties. And I find they give just a bit of cultural need. Like, especially in circumstances where let's say a man's wearing a full suit and let, they don't wear beaded earrings or much uh, beadwork, a seal skin bow tie might work well, or even a big tie. And While you're working, um, someone is asking, which way do you cut the seal skin? Uh, which way is the fur going? Does it matter mm -hmm. how you're cutting it? So, yes. Um, this way, I am cutting the fur downwards based off this uh, piece. But if I was to cut on here, it would go downwards. So this one, the fur is coming downwards and you want to cut from the top down. But it's also preference if you want the fur going to the side, because when I fold this, you could see how the fur bunches up on the side. So that's why I'm cutting the other way. But this is two different versions. So if you would like, this is cutting with the fur and against the fur. Thank you. That's really helpful. Problem. Happy to help. I love answering questions. And I find cutting with a ulu does take some time and there is a specific way you have to cut it. The blade is sharp on one side and then dull, well, not sharp, dull on the other side. And I forget that quite a bit, so I'll try and cut and then it's just not cutting. I'm like, oh wait, I gotta switch it. And another question on cutting seal skin. Someone is asking, do you cut the seal skin at an angle while you're cutting? I am cutting it at an angle and putting my hand down here to get a little bit more traction so it's a bit easier to cut through. Um, it would be a lot easier with a razor blade. My ulu is the tiniest bit dull, so it's taking a little bit of time. And that's why I'm going on uh, an angle like this. But thank you for that question. Because yes, some people like to cut on an angle or go to the very edge to not waste any seal. And someone is asking, how do you sharpen your ulu? So there's a couple ways you could sharpen the ulu. There is um, with a normal knife sharpener, you would just do the one side. Uh, or one way that I was taught you could use just a normal bowl. You flip it over to the ceramic part and go down and it sharpens it really amazing. You just take, let's say this is the edge, you just go across and you keep going like that to the sharper side. And it works amazing, especially when I can't find something to sharpen my ulu. I'll just flip over a bowl and use the ceramic side. Thank you. Of course. This last part might be a bit tougher because it's on a smaller part. I recommend uh, when first working with seal skin, give yourself a lot of time because it is quite hard to work with in the beginning. Like even now, I I love working with seal skin, but it is like a hardy leather like thickness. I find when sewing it, you definitely need a thimble. You Sometimes I even use pliers, so it's a bit easier on my hands. And I know people who have like arthritis who aren't really able to sew the same or pull. So they like to use the thimble, the leather thimble as well, as well as the pliers, just to make it a bit easier. 
And personally, I use sinew for this uh, because I find it is quite nice and holds on to the seal skin nicely. Thank you. There's another question um, around cutting. So how does one safely hold a razor blade when cutting seal skin? Um, so if we're talking about the ones that like you pop into a shaver, um, it would be tough. You would have to, I've hold it by my two fingers and I use it kind of like a ulu. Um, this is kind of similar to size. So like this and then go. But if you have um, a push up, I believe they're called ulfas. Um, those work amazing too. And they're a lot easier because you're able to hold on to the cover. <laughs> Thank you. I'll let you work some more and I'll come back with questions later. Oh, no worries. I'm happy to answer. So now that we have both pieces as well as this one, we can get started sewing. I have this sinew that I will start to split for us. Sinew is a, well, this one is a wax thread, not traditional sinew. Uh, but I still like to break it apart and make it have multiple threads. Clear this area a bit for sewing so it's a bit easier to see now. Amazing. Now that we have our pieces, I did a set of the double one like this, which you could do. Uh, the template has one template that is like this and then with the single line. And then the second template is the one here that's the double. So if you would like to try doing a single bow tie, which would be just one with the little line, or we could do one like this. I think I'm going to attempt this one. I am so excited. So what I do first is I layer them, see how they fit and if I like how it works, or if I have to resize anything or cut it down. As you can see, it does come over quite a bit. Um, so I could resize or even see how it looks with this. Oh, I totally forgot. Here we go. Amazing. Someone is asking, uh, where do you get the sinews you're using? Um, any craft store has the style of sinew. I maybe not any craft store. Um, stores that have leather, you're able to buy as well as. Um. I believe Michael's might have some or Amazon. I'm not 100% sure. This one I picked up at a local indigenous shop here in Ottawa. Thank you. Of course. And for sewing, I use a, a leather needle with the pointed edge. For this, you do not have to double thread it. I find going once through works pretty nicely and then tying it off at the end. Does the size of the needle matter? Depending. Um, for most leather needles, I believe you're able to, it's just by preference. Um, not like a beading needle. It would be nice for after when we're personalizing. Um, but definitely for sewing through the seal skin and the leather, uh, leather needle or just a hardier needle. <laughs> I, I'm not the best with sizing of stuff or like 
the specific numbers of and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm happy to help. Thank you. It's helpful to know that the type of needle that's, uh, thank you for sharing. For this part, I take this and fold it halfway through to get a bigger style. I find you are able to go all the way and it does create that nice um, hoop look, I find that looks really nice. But if you do want it to be a bit longer, you could totally go towards the edge as well. And around this time, if you do have everything cut out, I am super excited. We are able to personalize it now, which is definitely my favorite part of sewing bow ties. I've made ones where they're like this and have uh, antler. I've done ones with fur or fabric and just the idea of like making it for yourself is truly amazing. Today I have brought some uh, red fox fur as well as rickrack and some other fur. Um, but you're able to bead the bow ties, add pretty much anything to it. It's awesome. And one thing that I find is amazing, if you have a hard time hand sewing, this pattern works pretty well on a sewing machine as well. This one is basically a bigger version of this. I'm going to be making with this one tonight, or maybe this one. Hey, I could let the chat choose. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> So are you asking people if, if uh, they want you to work with the darker piece of seal, seal skin or the lighter one? Sure. Oh, it, I, either I'm going to make both. I don't mind either. Um, but if they would like to choose which uh, seal goes with the fabric, that would be so cool. I'm seeing some people mention the darker one. <laughs> this one amazing so for this one it is more of a square style that I cut out actually uh when we were taking a moment in the beginning and so for the personalization of this one I think it would look beautiful if I open these sides up and added fur in the middle Instead of having to cut it again, I could actually just sew it down, which might be a lot easier. Better to check twice and then cut twice. <laughs> Ooh, one thing also, I find sewing seal skin can be very tiring on the hands, especially if you don't have a thimble. Uh, tonight, I am wearing a leather thimble made by my fiance, um, but a metal thimble works as well. I do find it kind of comes off your hand as well, but whichever is preferred. And to start off, I do tack them down on the side to make sure that I have a specific liking of where the fur will be sitting. So now that that's tacked down, I can see that I'm going to have to trim a bit off this side, but it's coming out pretty nice. I can't wait to wear this. While you're working, someone's asking if you sell your bow ties. 
Yes, um, I haven't made some in a while, but I do. I have a website called dakelk.com. Uh, I'm slowly getting it started right now. It's more just showing off my artwork, but I would love to sell my artwork more often. One stitch I love to do with seal skin as well is a blanket stitch because it does hold the seal skin and kind of cover the raw edge of the hide. And it just creates a cute little pattern. I love the look of blanket stitches on clothing or it just adds that little bit of, it feels like it's more homemade. I love wearing stuff that is made by and actually tonight I am wearing a beautiful parka or this one is not called a parka it is a western style jacket my sister-in-law got it commissioned for me and it is gorgeous so wearing indigenous clothing is truly amazing I <laughs> lost my point of conversation there <laughs> Another uh, question while you're working. So someone's asking what different kinds of furs and letters or other materials do you use for your bow ties? You kind of talked a little bit about some of the like uh, unique different elements you bring in uh, and where do you get those materials? Amazing. That is a great question. Um, so the different materials that I could use for making bow ties. So like here tonight, uh, there is the seal skin, there is the leather. Uh, on some days, oops, this leather is a dyed deer leather, I believe, or a cow. Um, but you're also able to use moose or really any kind. Um, I also have different styles of leather here. This one is a lot more malleable. So if you want a softer look, that it, it would work really great. Um, And a lot of my materials I get from either, uh, so the seal skin came as a gift from my mom. Uh, the leather, I actually purchased that the last summer solstice powwow. And if not, there's an amazing group online that talks about, um, where to connect to get for there's a couple stores that i know of that sell seal skin as well as leathers and stuff like that you could also even order straight from the hunter up north um yeah but i would say that there is a difference between a chemical tan seal and a natural tan so some seal skins actually will not handle down here's heat so i live in ottawa and my family is from Baker Lake, Nunavut. Um, the way up north, they would tan the skins. Um, sometimes would not be able to work down here. So women would put the mitts or the shoes into the freezer so that the skin won't, I believe, mold. Uh, but if it is chemical tied, um, chemically cleaned it does last in hotter weather better which i believe most seal skins now unless you're ordering straight from a hunter come chemically tanned not 100 percent on that though thank you for sharing it was actually a question that someone had about the seal skin you have if it was tanned naturally or commercially Oh, that's amazing. Yes, um, this one was tanned commercially. It was gifted from my mom. She noticed how much I love the ring seal look and she was really excited when she saw that one. Thank you, I'll let you work some more.
one thing I also find great about sewing um, at this point is that you could jump off to different parts of this uh, areas while sewing. So I've done two tacks and then I'll just tack it there and pull it down. And then continue sewing on this side. I pulled the thread out. And at this point, it doesn't have to be perfect. There is still going to be time uh, to fix it as well as add stuff to cover areas that don't look the perfect or up to what you would want for it. There's a few questions about the templates. So people are wondering, of course. Um, are, they, are they just different styles or are they supposed to cut all of them to make a bow tie together? Amazing. So with the template, um, I'll grab the papers. I have oops, this one I didn't fully finish cutting out, but with that little I part in the middle. So there are two bow ties here. Um, so this will be the first one with the little cover up here and it will fit like this. And this part will be tacked back. That's what this one is and then the second one is more of a plain style one where it'll be folded and sewn back like this and then have that other part put up here thank you so people have the choice if they want to do kind of the double bow tie or a single one yes thank you As you're working, some people would like to see your hands a little closer just so they can see exactly what you're doing with the sewing. Thank you. Of course. So what I am doing right here is I am just tacking these sides down to fold in the edges of the seal skin to get that rounded look at the edge of the bow tie. And now that that parts are all tacked on all four sides, I'm able to take it out like this. And now that we see that there's some edges up here, we are able to trim those with scissors. Don't have to worry about using a ulu there. <laughs> Now to attach this to the next part. As you can see, I have only used one of the couple threads still from that sinew I have broke apart earlier. It, you don't need too much. It is awesome like that. Um, And someone's asking, um, the piece that has the end that's double pointed, do you fold that back or do you leave it open? Um, you can leave that part open. Um, where did I put this one? It is right here. It is supposed to be more of 
it reminds me of a ribbon bow tie. So, you know, when you make uh, a ribbon and then it has those two cut edges that look very triangular pointed, that is what it's supposed to be mimicking. But if wanting to sew them in, you totally can. I think that'd look pretty cool. So to attach these together, um, I have already sewn down the middle with the sewing machine here. Um, I find easiest way, especially because they are both going to be folded one way, is to find the part. Here we go. And I should have used my thimble for this part. But send it through and you could see almost there. <laughs> oh, that looks so amazing. It's already coming out great. <laughs> and just sewing it right through works and you could go through a couple times. It is going to be covered by either what you choose to have here in the middle. Um, I've done items like fur here before and then the cover, which looks pretty cool especially on items that are not as bright for people who are using fabric um, are you using the same technique of kind of tacking it uh, on the back and sewing that together or a little bit different um so if people are using fabric it might be a lot easier um to not have to tack it uh, by four, you might be able just to sew right through here because if you are doing the double one, it will be covered with fabric. It's a lot easier just to go through once and twice right there. And since it'll be covered, you don't have to worry too much about it. Thank you. After going through my first time, you can see that I went through the seal skin the fabric and back through i'm going to go through again a bit closer to the edge this time and all the way wrapped around so it's still like looping you don't have to worry about it getting caught anywhere um and you do not have to double stitch it up here not double stitch blanket stitch And then once again, tacking a bit closer to the edge to get that edge pulled in towards the center of the bow tie. You could play around with it a bit. I find depending on how you tack it, it does slide around a little bit. Um, but at this point, once you have those two pieces together, we can start um, personalizing. So I have brought some rickrack as well as uh, fur. I think I am going to attach the red seal skin to this one. And have it match up like that. For people who are choosing to do the double bow tie, um, there's a question if the first step is to fold and tack the outer edges to make the bow's outer loop. So do you kind of um, do it on both? Do you do it just on one? How do so, you uh, work on that? <laughs> of course. Um, for the double one, I find that I would just tack down the one and then you don't have to tack down the second part as this part is the one that's supposed to look like the ribbons being cut and you would only really have to tack, tack down the little edge the point of these looking kind of like goggles um is to have this part tack down either here or you could go all the way depending on what size you're hoping for Thank you, that's helpful.
While you're working, someone is wondering um, where you got your fabric. Someone's saying the fabric is so beautiful. Where did you source it? Um, this one, it's kind of funny. I actually also sourced it at the last summer solstice Palo. There was an amazing vendor there. She has different styles of fabric, uh, indigenous fabric. This one is the tan color. And it has indigenous floral on it as well. First Nation floral. Thank you. And for your fabric piece, uh, what template did you use for that specific fabric piece? This one is an oversized version. One second, let me just take another look. So actually, this one is kind of like this version, but more big and on the edges. So I showed this in the beginning, um, saying that I started off using a Kleenex box and cutting it out to figure out my design. Um, I really started out just trying to figure out how to sew bow ties. And this is one of my big ones that I did. Um, so if I was to cut it out, it would look, let's say if I did this and then it folded, it would pretty much look similar to this. And then I would tack it down here so that you would get that big like part. <laughs> the big fold on the bow tie up here. And at this point, once I've gone through each side twice, I'm going to come back around, make sure that my needle goes into the middle and not the side because it, when you're sewing the second parts together, um, sometimes the first part, especially if you're using seal skin for the top, um, it can move. And just to have it like lined up as you're sewing really helps so that you don't have to unstitch after. <laughs> There we go. Let's see how it came. Oh, sweet. So it did pull in really wet nicely. So this is the string from the beginning. Um, as you guys remember, this was a very square piece of seal skin. And now it's sitting very beautifully, nice and like tightly sewn in the middle and really giving off that bow tie look. And if you guys would like to come see up on myself, I would have to. Move it around a little, of course, but it looks cute. Or a hair bow tie. I today have the um, for the hair, and to attach them at the end, uh, we'll be doing that after though. But this is what I use for when I attach a bow tie to to be a hair bow tie <laughs> or a hair bow. Someone is saying, um, I love bow ties. What was your inspiration for specifically working with bow ties? My inspiration for specifically working with bow ties was that for a while, I always saw like my sister or women in the community having beautiful 
seal skin um, hair brooches and they were gorgeous. And I was thinking about it and I've seen other artists create seal skin um, or even leather bow ties and the idea of continuing that. And I just, I haven't seen it in a while and just seeing our culture be connected in like, such a cute way is nice um but my true inspiration for the bow tie was um actually my fiance <laughs> he he was the one who inspired me to create a bow tie like this so once the both pieces are together um it can slide a bit which mine is doing you can tack them together which I will be doing but if you want them to be separate that is also completely fine it's more just based off your preference and if you want it to be more wide and together <laughs> Someone is asking if there is any way to prevent the fraying on the fur as you're working. Um, to prevent the fraying. Which part of fraying I would have to? For now, it wasn't specific. I know you mentioned, though, at the beginning, um, kind of that using the uru instead of the scissors really helps oh, with yes. that. Um, especially when using seal skin, uh, specifically cutting through it can get really messy if you're using scissors because it does cut the small furs as well. Um, so using like a razor blade or something sharp um, definitely helps it from fraying and going everywhere. So now that I tacked it, it is sitting a lot nicer on that side. And I usually just end off my knots by going through a couple times and then tying it off with a double knot. Ooh, and I always forget to do this while I'm working, but trimming up the extra threads. Someone is asking if trying to use seal skin for both of the layers of the double bow tie, um, how do you recommend making the back piece? Ooh, so um, if you are going to be doing a double seal skin bow tie, I totally recommend tacking it down here. Because if you tack it down, it doesn't create it as bulky. So I know when you fold seal skin, it does get kind of bulky. And especially if you're going to be doing a double, um, it's nice to get the back one done like this so that it is as flat as possible for when you get the second part up, which is more of the 3D aspect of the bow tie. Amazing. Well, now that I have that one together, we shall move on to the single one. So for this one, I am just going to be going through almost all the way. And I'm going to be doing the single tack that I brought up earlier about um, if people were using fabric or 
other seal skin, and I believe it was I talked about earlier as well. So for this part, I am going to pack it right around here. And then I'm going to start in the back so you don't get the thread showing, or at least not showing in the front. Um, I see your question saying, will the seal skin break down or dry out over time? It can happen if it is a naturally done seal, naturally tanned seal. Amazing. Now that that one is tacked, you will see that single line, but it will be covered by either what you're going to be having in the middle. But if you are just going for a pure no covering or no extra designs and you just want a simple bow tie with the one cover in the middle, um, you could bring the tack all the way to the front and then as well as this one and cover the thread there with the center part of the template. A question about uh, your Ulu. So someone is asking, our elder is asking if you know where to buy the, where did you buy the Ulu? So I got this, or, this Ulu um, I got here from an artist in Ottawa. Um, but there is a website that has Ulus available. I am not 100% sure the name, but I believe if you type in Ulu, like U-L-U, online, you will be able to find that there. and. They are honestly so amazing to use. Um, I use them at dinner. I love cooking with my ulus. Not this one. This one's specifically for sewing. Um, I have three ulus at home. I use one for vegetables. I have another that I use for uh, meat. And then one that <laughs> I just got gifted. So it's still just sitting up all pretty. <laughs> Not used yet. <laughs> Also, I am using a black thread in most of my work so that you guys are able to see where I'm sewing a bit better. But um, if you want it to hide, you can match the thread to your leather or your thread to your fabric or anything like that. I've also brought other types of thread, but I think this shows up the best for everyone. A question related to thread. Someone is asking if uh, it's possible to use floss. Yes. Um, you are able to use floss. I actually started my beading when I was younger. I was around 14 learning how to bead and floss was my go-to. And as you're sewing, what are the stitches that you use the most when you're making uh, your bow ties? Um, I am not good with the name of the stitches. All I know is the overhand one is the uh, the one that I showed over here that goes over top a couple times, I believe is called a blanket stitch. Um, but I just do the straight sewing or most of it, or tacking it down. It depends on the size as well. Uh, if you want to do a bigger bow tie, you will have to sew a bit more and keep the sides in, like how on this one it's smaller. I only have to do the side. But the seal skin, if it is much larger, you could just do a normal like uh, up and through <laughs> stitch. Thank you. So you're saying kind of on the edges, sometimes some blanket stitch, and then sometimes some running stitches kind of going through. 
yes. when needed and some tacking. Thank you. There's two questions that are asking um, where uh, people can purchase seal skin. What's the best places? So um, I think one of the places that I go to is called Gaston Fourier. They are in Quebec. Um, they, I believe, hire uh, indigenous hunters to catch the fur but do not quote me on that i'm not 100 sure but i do go there for my seal skin for my furs they have an amazing um uh, uh amount of fur i haven't gone in person but just looking at their website oh i love fur and seeing it it's like oh i can't get it just yet <laughs> uh. Did that help? Um, there's also uh, different Fourier. Um, oh, that's amazing. Um, there's one in Winnipeg, I do know as well, called Bill Warb. He sells seal skin. Um, but here in Ottawa, other than ordering in or finding a local vendor, I found it was quite hard to find seal skin in the beginning. I I found different like vendors I work with now, but in the beginning it took me a bit. Thank you. And some people are mentioning uh in Edmonton and Alberta, Hodford hides. <laughs> it's come oh. up twice in two different answers. Oh, Gaston Henry. Is that Gaston? That might be the one I was speaking of. I just saw the thing pop up and that place uh, might be the one I actually order from. I might have had the name wrong. Yes, in Montreal. Yes. Thank you. That is the one I was speaking about. They have great fur. There we go, once it's all sewed. Oh, that definitely answers the question from earlier um, about people asking where to get some you. and you is there as well. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank For you, this yeah. one, I am putting um, this red fox fur. I love having fox fur on cute bow ties, especially when it's in the hair. It just looks so nice against the um, <laughs> my hair, I guess. <laughs> I was going somewhere but lost that <laughs> mid-sentence. Uh, So oh, that looked very freaky. I do not recommend cutting with a ulu like that, but it was a very small piece and I wanted to make sure it was taut enough that the ulu would actually cut through. I definitely recommend safety while using ulu as well as the razor blades while cutting seal skin because even myself, I've had a couple times where I've got myself with the blade and it hurts and oof. Definitely want to be careful in that aspect. Sweet, so for adding the fur, um, I just go like this, layer it, and have this part sewn up so that the part of the hide will hold and hide the knot. So if you see, while I push thread through, oops, and grab this, the knot will stay on that side and I could just trim this so that we don't see the extra thread. I honestly love teaching this. I'm having so much fun showing. Uh, 
Oh, to sew a bow tie. Thank you for everyone who is here. I hope that your guys' sewing is going well at the same time. So since uh, fox, I find, is a very, well, this red fox has a very thin fabric, uh, not fabric, thin skin part. You will only have to sew through it once. And now all I need is the middle. And to end this one, I think I'm going to do a rickrack Ooh. through the center. That looks great. Yeah. Elizabeth, thank you so much. That's also the place I was talking about for Ulu. You are so amazing. I am very bad at remembering um, names. <laughs> um, I always have to see something to remember. I'm very much a visual learner, so I am very happy. I'm showing you guys like visually how to create this. Um, cause I totally get like learning and like being a visual learner or forgetting stuff if you weren't visually taught, cause I go through that. <laughs> and for the glue gun question, yes, uh, we do use a glue gun for the pin or you are able to use, um, super glue. I find I use, um, a glue gun just because it's a bit quicker but also if you use super glue on the skin sometimes it will do a little bit of smoke um because of the chemical reaction i found that out but as long as you don't put too much this is just my scrap piece so i don't mind showing you guys it will work but it will need a bit more because the seal skin does swallow up the super glue pretty easily. Mine seems to be almost empty. I'm so glad you're almost done your first bow tie. And I always hesitate to throw out my scraps as well. I actually brought a box of <laughs> items here today, just excited to show off all the different like personalizations you could do for the bow tie. I do earrings with the extra seal skin. Um, so let's say you cut off a piece or something like this and you have this line you could trim it up into a single uh, one like this and create like drop earrings or you could even bead around them. That's the one thing I've done lately is that if I have a lot of scrap seal skin, I like to cut them out into tiny cabs and just like bead around them or hmm, what else is fun to do with small seal skins? Oh, you could create little, if it's big enough, you could create a tiny ball and that could be used for hacky sack or even high jump. Uh, yeah, using scraps of seal skin is truly uh, amazing. You could do so much with the small pieces. Ooh, so I find when you're doing a double seal, the best way to attach might be, um, I wish I had the doubles, ooh, seal, or I wish I created a double seal today. So if you're gonna be doing a double seal, I totally recommend, so let's say this is your top one and then your bottom one is, I'm just gonna joke saying this one. Um, you're gonna come through the base with a knot, of course, at the end and find your middle and then tack right back through down. And you could do that a couple times. It will sit pretty nicely, especially if you have a part in the middle where you like. 
And if you want it to be higher on one side, like once you have it tacked there, you could tack it upwards or down depending on your preference, or you could just leave it like that. But best way I find is coming through the base up with double seals so that you don't have to worry about the thread going around the sides um, and you won't have to hide the thread as much, especially because sewing through seal, your thread gets hidden pretty nicely. Like um, on this one, if it will come into focus, um, you could kind of see the thread in this part here, but because of the fur being so thick, you won't see the sewing unless it's on like, let's say the edge of the hide. Just folded to one side, create a nice part in the fur. If you have questions for the artists, it's a good time to put them in the Q&A because we have about 15 minutes left. So please feel free to put your questions. Exciting, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I love answering questions about my artwork or who I am as an artist or questions on how to become more of an artist. Um, yeah, <laughs> I am happy to answer any. So now that I have this part folded back here, um, we, ooh, okay. I almost forgot a step. I am glad that I spoke that out loud before continuing. So for this part, we are at the part where we are able to attach the back clip. Um, I almost didn't attach it and kept sewing because I was just excited. Um, so at this part, mine is quite furry. So I'm gonna need a little bit of extra hot glue, but I take my piece, I will open it up. I think this one, no, it's good. So I open up the piece and then you can put as much hot glue. I, I find you just need enough to cover at least the center and come on. I just got to wait for it to warm up a little bit more. But so at the time when it does warm up, I will be adding hot glue to right here and then placing it down and holding. And then once that is done, I will finish sewing off the middle part. Oops, I will grab another piece. Um, currently, uh, around $40 for a bow tie. Uh, so depending on how much work I put in or how many hours or also, of course, like also valuing yourself as an artist. Um, it took me a while to truly price my work and I even still have trouble sometimes now pricing my work. Um, but I think a good baseline is taking account for your materials, your time, as well as the time it took for you to learn these because it could be made within a couple minutes, but it could have taken you years to learn and enjoy and, and grow in your passion. So truly it is, based off yourself. And yes, they do sell the metal clips. That's actually where I got these, as well as the part, this one that goes for uh, in the shirt. I also make bow ties without the neck back part because I find creating them with the part that comes up around here, especially with seal skin, it does get itchy. So having it main in the front and just attachable to your clothes 
has been really great and saves you also from possibly it being too small or too big. I need another glue stick. Oop, there we go, we are starting. Let's try not to get my skin. It has always been like that. Anytime I've ever used a hot glue gun, it's like a rite of passage. You gotta burn your skin a little bit. <laughs> So I like to hold it there until it's completely dry or cool. And you can also sew it on. I do both. So as you can see, this one is sewn on. And for the reason for that is because it is also glued and sewed. So in the beginning, I would only sew them on. And I found, especially if it's a hair tie one, the fabric really moves and it it won't stay in the specific spot. So using the hot glue as well as the sewing just adds that extra strength to it. Amazing, so now that that is attached, I'm gonna grab this and pull it around. Oh, I've gotta fix the fur again. I'm gonna pull it back around to have that center done and then you can sew it Oop, you might not be able to see with this one because of the amount of fur but if i was to show you guys how to sew it on thank you so much uh for your guys group of course i'm so happy you guys have attended um Thank you. I am so excited to be teaching this and just being able to share my teachings. And it just, it brings me joy and happiness knowing that I'm teaching people artwork that is like so special to me. My culture, um, being an urban Inuk, I grew up not fully being connected because uh, a lot of my family was still up north. Um, like my grandma moved down here and had my aunts and uncles and my mom, uh, they all moved here. But being connected to my culture really brought me back uh, happiness and like, it it's fulfilling. I really enjoy sharing that part. And yes, I do have a craft page. Um, I post my artwork on Takeok. So in my name, it goes T A Q Q I Q. Um, I have that on social media as Facebook and Instagram and a website. And just to show you guys before we close, because I believe we're getting close, after you hot glue gun it, just because there's too much fur here to show you guys. Um, you'll keep this part open. And once you pull it right back through, you're gonna sew underneath this part. You're gonna sew underneath and have it tight down here so it holds. And that will be done after the hot glue. And in the end, it does end up looking like this. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. sharing all your teachings, Salem. This is really nice to to see and to look at. People, I'm seeing several messages of thank you in the in the Q and A. I was wondering um, if you wanted to share a little bit too. Um, I know you work in many different mediums, and I also know you make many different things with seal skin. And I want, was wondering if you wanted to share some of that of as we come course. close to the end of our time together. Yes. Um, so I love working with seal skin. I am an artist. I do digital artwork um, that is mainly posted on my social media pages. And um, but I also sew and I've created a park, parkas, seal skin mitts, hats, um, a lot of different items in my culture. And one thing I actually brought here today were a pair of seal skin mitts I made a couple of years back. Um, seal skin is truly such an amazing uh, fur. Like 
It is waterproof. It's so warm. Um, the poilu mitts, I swear, if you ever have a pair of poilu mitts, it is one of the warmest you will wear. Um, this one is a men's pair. I made it for my fiance. A woman's pair, like the one I would create for myself, usually has a fur that comes pretty big up here. Um, some other creations I did. I had, oh, I, um, I know where it is, but it's all right. I was so happy to show these off. I love showing off the mitts and the parkas. They're so and beautiful. <laughs> thank you for sharing them. Oh, Someone is saying, thank you for sharing your skills and inspiration and enthusiasm. Wonderful to spend this time listening to your joyful voice. Oh, thank you so much. I'm seeing those comments now. Thank you so much to everyone who came. I was so happy to share and just get back into sharing like workshops it's been a while since i've done one and it just feels so nice to be back teaching and connecting with my community thank you so much for sharing is there anything else you wanted to share before we kind of finish um i would love if you guys would check me out on instagram as well as facebook i post a lot of my artwork on there is it all right if i show off some of my digital art Mm -hmm. Amazing. So I have my page right here. So this is Tukik. Uh, this is where I post all my digital artwork. I work, I'm always very inspired by legends as well as uh, femininity and beauty and Tuni. So please check me out there. I love to post digital artwork and my other creations and you guys could get in contact with me there to do workshops or commissions or anything like that I'm really excited to connect with my community and would love if you guys connected thank you so much thank you for the beautiful workshop for all the different types of bow ties you shared with us we really really appreciated our time uh, with you tonight so thank you so much Selim of course and i'm happy we were basically able to get one done i just wasn't able to sew this part completely together but oh my gosh i am so excited oh also i would love if everyone would post and like tag me in their bow ties i am so excited to see how they look and like the creativity and why i went into different like ways of personalizing it with fur or beads or fabric i would definitely really enjoy to see It'd be great to see everyone's work. So um, thank you so much to Salem for tonight's workshop. Uh, as Salem mentioned, the best places to follow her work are her website, www.takik.com, Facebook, also under the same name of Takik, and then Instagram, which is the at underscore T-A-Q-Q-I-Q -Q -I -Q underscored. So several places to follow Salem's beautiful work. The exhibition Nixiqua Humor and Horror is on display at the gallery until March 24, 2024, if you are in the area and want to visit it. And if you want to participate in more virtual workshops, we invite you to visit the gallery's website and to browse the upcoming workshops and register or to rewatch past events. So if you want to rewatch Salem's workshop in the future to um, do some more bow ties, it will be on our YouTube channel in the future. And as Selim mentioned, we would love to see what you made, all the different projects that you worked on. Um, you can tag the gallery with the tags that you can see on the screen, and you can tag the artist as well. Uh, we would love to see what you made. A big thank you to each and every one of you who came tonight to make art with us today and wishing everyone a good rest of the day. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. <laughs>